monument to architecture and innovation and productivity. Very orderly, very productivity oriented. Japan is awesome. So, about this uh, AI thing, I went to a conference here in Japan, in Osaka, about artificial intelligence on the 12th, uh, a couple days ago, and my, uh, my purpose really was to kind of echo what I've been saying for years and what Elon Musk has recently said. Um, you know, we need to self-regulate AI. We need to put humans first and not profits in this regard because AI is very dangerous. Now, Elon Musk said that AI is more of a threat to humanity than nuclear war. And if you think about it, it really is because when AI improves so much and the rate of improvement is so fast, that humans become obsolete will either be pets or parasites to the AI. I mean, they're going to supersede our ability and they're going to require less sustainability to, to, you know, to continue. I mean, you know, humans are pretty fragile. AI will improve so fast that it will not be nearly as fragile as humanity. And so I just echoed my, my main and only question. I got to ask one. It was, it was only a two hour session and there was a lot of other questions, but I just asked, you know, what, um, in regards to self-regulation and self-preservation are we incorporating into AI? And I've been into AI and automation, robotics for over a decade. And so I'm, you know, very concerned about it. I made my first video about this uh, threat, this, this potential threat in 2016. And now I've seen the rate of improvement grow so fast that I'm more concerned than ever. I'm, I'm as concerned as Elon Musk. I, you know, I'm actually terrified for humanity if we don't self-regulate. And we, we can't have a bureaucracy regulate for us there's just there's just no way because it's already open source it, it would be like cannabis it'd be like weed you know they could put laws against it but there would be a black market there would be you know people developing it anyway so it it scares me that ai will be the future of sentient life on earth and that we will either be pets or parasites in their eyes so, and this goes back to the abortion topic as well, because when we start devaluing human life, when we start um, rationalizing uh, wholesale murder of humanity and saying, well, these groups of humans matter and these groups of humans don't, kind of like the Nazis did when they started practicing eugenics in the 30s and 40s. Um, when we start saying, you know, well, these human lives are, are important because they're born, but these human lives are not important because they're not born. I mean, that's, that's exactly what eugenics was. You know, just rationalizing what humans were important and what humans were not important. So I had a friend um, confront me because I've been talking a lot about this. There was a Harvard study uh, that the findings were, the summary was that humans in the womb have just as many constitutional rights as humans outside of the womb. And, and this is very important because this is what it all comes down to. Are unborn humans human life? And, and do they deserve constitutional rights um, and protections? And if so, then if we can call the murdering, the killing of unborn babies abortion, and that's just okay because it's abortion and not murder. Well, what, what makes that different? If they're humans with every constitutional right that I have or you have in the United States or in other countries, um, then what is different be between a pre-birth abortion 
and an afterbirth abortion. I mean, you might as well just call murder abortion. Because, you know, say your neighbor's annoying and you want to off him, and you just call it abortion, and that, you know, terminology makes it okay, well then, you know, we have no regard for human life at that point. And so, you know, not only is AI sort of a threat, um, it will be more of a threat. And then, you know, if we look at time more linearly, like in, uh, you know, the future is only based on distance, but it's, you know, currently happening. Like it's, you know, in effect, what we do now will affect our future. It's linear. Um, you know, it, it is like, you know, going, it is a threat. AI is a threat to humanity. We can't look at it any other way. But in that same regard, we are a threat to humanity when we can negotiate what a quality life is or what a life worth preserving is versus a life that is not worth preserving, you know? And so someone was telling me that, um, well, you know, you, you're not pro-choice because you believe in mandating uh, women to have their babies and, you know, that you want laws against abortion. I have never said that I've wanted laws against abortion. Never. Um, in fact, I even believe in some forms of abortion. I've always supported the plan B and estrogen shots. You know, that just puts the responsibility on a quicker timeline. Like you've got three or four days tops to the side. You can't wait till the eighth month or the fifth month or the third month. You have to decide quickly, do I want this baby or do I not? It's all about responsibility. You know, you look at, at places, you know, like Asia, there's very few single parents in Asia, in Japan. I'm in Japan right now. Because they require their people, as a cultural expectation, not even as a legal expectation, but as a cultural expectation, they require their people to be responsible. Now, they do have a lot of abortions here, but they have very few single parents. You know, you don't see a lot of single mothers walking around, right? because they require responsibility. You've got to think before you act. And uh, I would say that, you know, that should be a cultural expectation. You should be required to really consider your actions before you do them, whether it be sex, whether it be whatever, you know, and know that there's consequences for our actions. And I think that would deter a lot of abortions. Um, you know, when it, when it comes down to like late term or after birth abortions, I mean, it's disgusting because at that point, the baby's got a fully functional brain, fully functional heart at 23 weeks. It's a, it's a human that's capable of living outside of the mother. You know, it might need a little bit of life support, but of course any, you know, baby would like, if you have a, a, a perfectly healthy nine month long baby, full term, 40 week baby, it's going to need your life support. You can't just expect it to live on its own, right? But a 23 week old baby can be born, can live outside of the mother with some life support and be a fully functional, healthy human being. So th I, I see no difference, like especially at that late on, you know, like there's no need to suck out a baby's brain or chop it into bits in the womb to abort it. There's so many other ways. You know, I mentioned too, the estrogen shots and the plan B, there's during sex um, contraception, there's pre-sex uh, contraception, like the pill, the Depo-Provera, the IUD, whatever. But then there's, you know, condoms, the sponge, there's spermicide, there's other things. And then there's after sex contraception, like the plan B and estrogen. There's no need, we're not in the dark ages anymore. This isn't medieval times. You know, a coat hanger or an abortion suction tube or a scalpel or whatever they use to chop up a baby in the womb, forceps really, they just rip it apart, um, isn't necessary. You know, we're not, we're not in the dark ages anymore. We need to start holding people accountable. And that's my only point. When I talk about these topics, it's not to get the government involved. I mean, sure, I'd be happy to see Roe versus Wade disappear. So there's not a, you know, wholesale you know, killing license available to doctors. 
I, I think that's wrong. I think that's immoral. But I'm not talking about, you know, putting women in prison for having abortions. That's not at all what I'm talking about. I've never said that. I'm just saying we need to be more responsible. This whole, you know, hippie love, you know, whatever, feminist movement in the 60s. You know, I don't need no man. I'm going to have sex with 50 guys and have five baby daddies and 25 abortions. That, that kind of thing needs to stop. That's irresponsible. It's immoral. And we're losing our sanctity of life, you know, our, our respect for humanity. We need to stop that. That's all I'm saying. Rest up in your poor head. Keep a cool head. Don't get excited. Keep a cool head. If you are right, keep a cool head. Don't get excited. With lots of weed and a few have to concentrate. 